Hello children, myself Kapuri Sabha, biology teacher from DAV Public School, CCM Unity. Right now we are on lockdown and therefore we have decided to teach you all something by uploading our videos. So please go through. that 
there are certain methods of vegetative reproduction. First method of vegetative reproduction, there are certain structures in plants. Why it is known as vegetative reproduction or propagation? Because reproduction takes place from the vegetative parts of the plant other than the reproductive parts. So there are certain vegetative units in the plants which is responsible for causing that vegetative propagation. Just we are going to take some of them which is there in the NCRT book. Runner, then there is sucker, then the third is tuber, then we have offset, offset, then the other one is bulb. This few we are going to deal with as they are very much mentioned in the syllabus. First is runner. The example is gladiolus. Gladiolus, we are taking the example of gladiolus. Sucker, the best example is mint. Tuber, the best example is potato. Offset, already you all know. The water hyacinth, that is icornia. And bulb, the most common one it is onion. Then also one thing is missing which was not mentioned. You can include rhizome also and the best example of this is ginger. What it is? Ginger. Wherever in whatever water body it is growing. 
so it has been given a particular name that is known as terror of bengal what it is known as terror of bengal why because water hyacinth was introduced in india because of its beautiful because of the beautiful shape of the leaves and the beautiful flowers but because of vegetative reproduction wherever it started growing it started to occupy or rather it was in a receipt it started covering the entire water body and ultimately what happened the water organisms or the other organisms which were there in that particular aquatic ecosystem they were deprived of oxygen and ultimately it led to water pollution so ultimately what we were going to come to the conclusion that granard sucker rhizome and all tuber all this are some vegetative units which are responsible for giving uh, concept for giving the concept of vegetative propagation and this units they are known as vegetative propagules what they are known as vegetative proper gules now this this is not the end of vegetative propagation you all must have heard about bryophyllum bryophyllum in this bryophyllum the leaves are having certain notches you see the leaves are having certain notches and from these notches what happens sorry from this notches what happens certain adventitious birds come out adventitious birds come out and this adventitious birds are being utilized by the farmers for propagation of or development of many offspring so from all the notches the vegetative or the adventitious birds comes out and they are responsible for this process of reproduction now one thing always is to be remembered that always under favorable conditions plants try to undergo a sexual reproduction but what happens the rest for the sexual reproduction favorable condition that means a sexual mode of reproduction is preferred in unfavorable condition they may go or shift over to sexual reproduction now we will deal with the certain phases of reproduction or the certain phases of the life span now we are going to move over sexual reproduction so first of all let us come with different stages or phases of of sexual reproduction of sexual reproduction now already in the part in part 1 already i have explained to you all that growth is represented you have birth then you have different stages of growth then after certain stage of growth you have the reproductive phase you have the reproductive phase then it is aging then it is aging and in plants it is known as senescence and this aging ultimately leads to death and this aging ultimately leads to death but what we have to see that from birth after birth there is certain phase of growth and this growth has to take place until to certain extent as long as it does not reach the reproductive phase after the reproductive reproductive phase means we will be moving to sexual reproduction now sexual reproduction what is sexual reproduction 
we have discussed the difference between sexual and asexual. You all saw there is production. What it is? There is production of gametes as well as there is fusion of gametes. There is fusion of gametes. In plants, we say in human beings the word puberty. When anyone reaches puberty, that leads to the development of the reproductive phase. In plant, this is marked the phase before the flowering. Once the flowering starts, we can say that that phase for sexual reproduction has been started. So let us deal with all these things right now. Formation of gametes, then it is fusion of gametes. Now it is very common that there this always we see the flowering plants flowering during a particular season or maybe uh, annual entire year maybe after 15 days or one month they keep on flowering but there are some exceptional cases which is mentioned in your NCRT book that is the case of bamboo do you all know that it flowers only once in its lifetime only once in its lifetime only one in its lifetime and this may be once in 550 to 100 years when it produces ample of fruits and flowers now next example we are going to deal with an exceptional case is strawbilanthus strawbilanthus kunthiana what this is Nilkaranji one more name is given to it Strabilethus kunthiana kunthiana what you are going to see in Strabilethus kunthiana they flower only once in 12 years and it was seen way back in 2006 or 8 that in Kerala and in Tamil Nadu vast stretches of land it was flooded or the entire land was filled up or covered with blue flowers last stretches of land and it was such a beautiful sight to see so there are some exceptional it is not that flowering plants means they will keep on flowering every now and then there are some exceptional cases also and we have seen that thing in case of bamboo as well as in strobilanthus kunthiana now Coming to the animals, in the, this is just the brief description of the chapters till now. Coming to the animals, we see there can be, there are two types of, in mammals we will see two types of breeders. Uh, seasonal breeders and continuous breeders. We are in case continuous breeders. It is not that only in the winter season or in the summer season we will be able to give birth to young ones. It can occur any, any time of the year. But in seasonal breeders, especially in the mammals that is the wild animals, what we are going to see that they have reached, has reached the reproductive phase but they will be able to reproduce or undergo the process of reproduction only during favorable conditions and they are known as seasonal breeders what they are known as seasonal breeders now in birds we know that they lay eggs only during particular season but again there is exception you must have seen the poultry birds where with the help of artificial stimulated conditions they are made to lay eggs throughout the year. So, everywhere the exception continues. In plants also, we have seen or we rather we will see that they will produce flower only when they get a proper amount of sunlight or a particular period of sunlight and particular temperature. That is the photo period plays a very important role in the process of flowering. So, there in mammals, we will see primates, non-primates and primates, non-primates and primates. In non-primates, I will give the examples like dogs and drog and others. And in the 
is primate, you have the apes, monkeys, human beings, so many, dog, cow, so many. Where in non-primates, what you are going to see, that they undergo, and all this cycle, they undergo oysterous cycle. cycle. What do they undergo? They undergo oysterous cycle. And these primates, what do they undergo? They undergo menstrual cycle. What do they undergo? Menstrual cycle. So this, how this oysterous cycle and menstrual cycle, how, what is responsible? They are possible only in placental animals and due to the regulation of hormonal control, this phenomenon of oysterous cycle and menstrual cycle occurs and this topic we are going to deal in detail in human reproduction. So, I am not just going into the details of it right now. More or less, we have dealt with different modes of asexual reproduction and we saw the exceptional cases in case of sexual reproduction also. Tomorrow or in my next video, we are going to deal with sexual reproduction. That is the three phases, pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization phases which will be taught in the topic of sexual reproduction. So, please wait for it now and watch this video and try to learn something.